So it's time to talk a little bit about the Amazon first impressions after beating hell difficulty for the very first time with this class. Of course, I only just played a single build. There's tons of variations, especially when talking about the Amazon, at least from what I can tell through the talent tree. So I'm going to be talking about some positives and some negatives, and then I will rate the class from 1 to 10 by the very end. So obviously I'm going to start off with a uh, positive here, just to keep things nice. And there's plenty of these. So the first one I wanted to talk about is very high damage output for both AoE and single target. Uh, a lot of the abilities, in fact, from what, again, I could tell from the talent tree, will offer you a really good area of effect damage output. And some of them, especially the one I ended up going with, offers a huge amount of single target damage. So against the bosses, it's actually great. It melts bosses. In fact, I am sure... I am positive that I did not ever kill any boss in the game this quickly with any other build I've played from all the other classes I've tried out. Uh, very, very solid damage output. Now, talking about a negative, and as I said, these were hard to find. This was the challenge of making this video, trying to think up about things that maybe I would classify as negatives. And this is one of them. Um, reusing skills from other classes I find is lazy, and that's exactly what this build was. Uh, the, you know, charged strike is essentially just a charged bolt from the sorceress class, but it's just like sort of transformed into melee or a melee variant. Uh, but it's the same exact thing, really. So I'm not too big of a fan of that. I would have liked it to be something specific to the Amazon. Another positive, and I sort of touched a little bit on this, I'm going to be touching a little bit on positives or on future positives and negatives as I talk about this, because everything sort of ties in together. But yeah, there has to be, uh, like in terms of playstyle variations, in terms of different builds you can make, this one is really, really high up there. Again, if you look at the talent tree, there's... There's so much variation there. There's bows, there's crossbows, there's pets even you can have, the Valkyries. Uh, there's buffs, there's javelins, there's spears, there's even magic you can use. Uh, so yeah, just easily one of the more vibrant classes. Very similar to the Druid. I feel like the Druid also has like tons of variations in terms of what you can make in terms of builds. You know, there's bear form, there's werewolf, there's elemental, tons of different abilities over there. Uh, there's even pets you can have as well. So those two classes I feel like are really high up there in terms of like build variation, like just drastically different from each other, which obviously I'm a huge fan of. A negative that I, uh, you know, sort of have to mention, of course, uh, is just the huge damage downturn between damage types to deal with immunities. So, you know, uh, if if I were to, was to look at, like, the section for javelins and spears, most of that is pretty much like lightning damage. There's a little bit of poison you can pick up, and there's a little bit of physical even, but the damage output that those two have to offer when compared to the build I chose is day and night. Uh, it's not nowhere close to the amount of damage that I was able to pump out. And the problem with that is, well, obviously I am just talking about the Javelin and Spear size, because I, when I was looking over at the bow and crossbow section, it seems to be mostly like cold and fire damage there. So, you know, uh, there's other obviously damage types you can pick up, but you can't really be bow, crossbow, and then spear and javelin, right? Because of the, the weapon types and all of that. It's just too different of a build. You can't really incorporate both of them uh, at the same time without, you know, having to swap weapons as well and all that, which is a little much uh, for me personally. But you have to keep this in mind because uh, much of the world is actually lightning immune, especially in Act 3. There are tons of lightning immunities throughout most of the act, I would say. And it's not just in Act 3. There were tons of lightning immunities in Act 5 as well, and obviously in other acts, but Act 3 was the most prominent. And I always like to pick a build because immunities exist in Hell, where if I could get more than one elemental damage type in, it'll be so much better, so much easier on myself 
because then I don't really have to skip things, I can still kill them, which I did, by the way. I could still kill lightning immune monsters, but it would be obviously much slower. Now, there was a bit of a hint that I was given uh, where I could have used a jab for a much more solid sort of physical element damage type there, but again, jab is nowhere near the damage that charge strike can offer. It's something, obviously, and it would have still been a much better option for me over what I was trying to do to deal with immunities when I did need to kill them, which worked out fine, by the way, uh, through the help of my follower and myself. I still had some physical damage output that I could uh, pump out, right? But yeah, still, you know, every time I see something that's lightning immune, it sort of sucks in a little bit of the fun uh, away from you. So yeah, you know, if you're not gonna go lightning, which I, I feel like most, most people who play Amazon are probably going to pick something that is heavily focused on lightning because it's just so much more damage. It sort of sucks out the fun having to skip those things or deal with them in a much more inferior way. Uh, so I guess if you could classify that as a negative, then I guess I am. Pos a positive. Okay, so this one is interesting because there's actually some interesting damage mitigation going on here. Uh, so I could obviously, you know, mitigate damage through my follower. I could practically just pick up the uh, Barbarian follower from Act 5, I believe, because the one from Act 2 wasn't really going to offer me much when compared to what the Barb could offer me. Uh, so yeah, the Barb can actually taunt things for me so that He's the one taking aggro and he's the one taking the damage. He can also debuff things for me. I, I even put the Cripify on the barb on the weapon. So that's another really, really nice debuff there. Because you can actually equip two weapons instead of one if you're going to pick him up. And you also have dodge chance buffs that you can just pick up passively from the talent tree for this class so usually it's like oh you get more hp you know or more defense or stuff like that but the buffs for the amazon are very unique you gain dodge chance now i do like dodge chance and i don't like dodge chance because it's sort of rng like if you happen to dodge you literally just mitigated all the damage but if you didn't you took the full force the full brunt of the hit and if you don't have the hp or the defense for it the damage mitigation for it then you're screwed because you can easily die although i didn't really die much with this build uh or with this class in general but still you know it's it's at least it's a different variant and at least it exists you can pick up some toughness buffs through the talent tree which is nice so talking about this damage mitigation i'm gonna talk about a negative now and that is Dodge chance for the Amazon, you don't just see one ability that says, oh, you can get more dot chance and you just start dumping points into it. It's actually separated. So like, like there's an ability which says you will dodge melee attacks. And then there's another one that says you will now dodge the ranged attacks if you pick this one. And then another one that says you will dodge spells or whatever. So it's not consolidated into one global dodging chance. You have to like essentially waste a ton of points picking all of these different dodge type variants instead of just all of them being in one. Now for me it wasn't as bad because I only just invested one point into each and then because I had plus two skills I still ended up getting like nine points for each but if you wanted to take these seriously and like max them out uh, especially if you're going for a Valkyrie setup a pet setup you have to actually max these out because they buff your Valkyries. So if you're going to be focused on that, you're going to end up picking all of these up, which obviously the dot chance affects you as well. But then it feels like if you go Valkyrie and you take that seriously, it, it would make it like a very boring, boring build because you only really summon one Valkyrie, I believe. And it's just going to be like buffed by all these things. And then you're just like sort of chilling there, not doing much of anything because you're left with absolutely no points. You just have a ridiculously high dodge chance and then you're just waiting for the Valkyrie to kill things for you. Uh, yeah, sure, kind of like the Necro, but the Necro at least was much more engaging and interesting and you had a lot more pets and it was a lot more fun than that. So the way it was implemented, I'm not a huge fan of when it comes to that middle talent tree. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a bit wasted, I feel like. I feel like they could have made different buffs there instead of just playing this gimmick around the dodge chance which was a little uh i don't know 
weak I guess if I'm trying to be polite here, a little weak in terms of like creativity and originality there, but uh, again, a very old game. You can't expect too much uh, in those terms. So that's that's basically it because I'm, I'm really struggling to find any negatives here. So I do have to be almost nitpicky. Uh, but as a conclusion, I'm gonna have to say like this was easily the best boss killer build I've played so far. As I said, AOE is solid along with skill variation. And I have to admit, having found that unique javelin helped me out tremendously. Because uh, without it, my time would not have been as smooth since you have to have specific weapons to be able to use certain abilities, which I guess you could classify maybe as another negative. But it does depend on how you look at it. Because it's also very interesting and unique. You know, a very unique way of doing things. Like, if you want to cast the spell, if you want to do this, you, you want to actually use this ability, you have to equip this this weapon. It only works when you equip this weapon, right? So it's a bit different, and I do like that, but it's, it, can, it can also be annoying that you can't really use it without this weapon type. So it's kind of like a 50-50 mix there. Uh, I, I'm like neutral about it, I don't really like it, and I don't really dislike it, I'm neutral about it, it's like, okay. But the fact that I actually did get that unique, and it was so powerful, I'm sure that helped out tremendously, especially of course in damage output, because uh, if I didn't have that, I would have had to go with like, you know, whatever javelin I would have got, which would have been probably like a normal item, and I would not have been, I think, that powerful, I still would have been powerful enough to beat hell for sure. But um, as quickly and as efficiently, maybe not. Now, obviously, for the moment of truth here, my ranking from 1 to 10 is a 9. Yeah, a 9. So this ranks the highest out of all the classes I've played so far. So that means that it can only be beaten by the Paladin. And I doubt that will be the case, although I'm not too sure what I'm expecting out of the Paladin. I still haven't looked at the talent trees or anything. Still haven't worked on that, but that's the only chance that any other class has to beat this, and it's just the Paladin. So for right now, apparently, the Amazon is my most favorite class in the game. Again, I haven't played every build that every class has to offer, so if I had played everything, maybe I would have changed my mind about that but i do for some reason like doubt it because i did look at all the talent tree every time i went to pick a build and a class so i did have i think a good enough idea of what every class has to offer regardless just based on that and then i made my decision to play that because it was just i felt like it would have been the most fun for me and it dealt respectable good enough damage to try and play the game with it so there is that but for right now yeah amazon is my favorite it's just the best put together class in general, and I believe has a great shot at beating even the Ubers if I was higher level, had better gear, and maybe doubled with uh, respecking into Valkyrie or just finding a way to tank their damage some other way while I destroy their HP. Uh, I think enough said there. I do believe, obviously, with my damage output, but then if I spec into Valkyrie, is Valkyrie gonna have enough damage to do the same thing? Because yeah, sure, now it's tanking it. But uh, do I still have that insane amount of damage, right? Because, again, you would have to level up a lot more. Terror Zones, I guess, makes it easier. But um, still, you're going to need really, really good gear as well. Uh, like, really good gear. Uh, and if you're going to take those two into effect, into consideration, then you can practically beat the Ubers with almost anything. If you're, like, level 97 and you have, like, everything the best for your build i do i do believe at that point the ubers become really really easy if i was able to beat i was actually able to enter uber tristram with like a, a level 71 necro you know and i was able to kill some ubers just like by being very low level and having mediocre gear so if i was able to do it like that if i was really high level and had the best gear for my build, I think that would become a joke. Uh, so there is obviously that, that is very important to say. But if I had to pick a, a class so far to deal pure damage output, I think the Amazon against the Ubers would be a very nice choice.
So yeah, that's my thoughts. Thank you very, very much for watching. Up next, as I said, is the Paladin. So look forward to that. The last class that I have to play uh, to play for this game as well. So after that, I am done. At least uh, for right now. Don't have really any further plans beyond that. So very excited for it. Again, it's the last class. And then I could say I've actually beaten Hell difficulty with every class in the game. So until then, take care.